Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. So I'll start with fusion. Most of the energy on the earth comes from the sun where you know it gets produced in uh, uh, nuclear fusion reactions. Light nuclei like isotopes of hydrogen are going to get smashed together to produce heavier more stable nuclei and as a result of that they release energy. Um, you know, uh, nuclear fusion, just remember, two light nuclei coming together to form a nucleus of a greater mass. So one such reaction that you would expect to see in the sun would be, um, let's say you have deuterium, right? Two of those atoms come hit each other and they get converted into, uh, they get converted into uh, helium and an excess neutron and some amount of energy, right? If you remember from our previous video, the binding energy per nucleon curve in particular, you're gonna remember that the binding energy per nucleon for light nuclei, like hydrogen, is low. But if two light nuclei were made to fuse together, they might form a heavier nucleus, which has a higher binding energy per nucleon. That is gonna be more stable than the two lighter nuclei from which uh, it was formed. And because of this difference in stability, a fusion reaction such uh, as the one we've shown here is gonna end up releasing energy. Fusion reactions are the source of solar energy, but at present we are unable to duplicate this reaction on Earth in a controlled manner. That's because the, the nuclei that are involved in the fusion have to be brought very close together and conditions of high temperature, high pressure are found at the center of the sun. Unfortunately, you know, uh, the, the, the reactions that require these conditions, I said unfortunately, are called thermonuclear reactions, right? Um, so that, as it implies, is uh, going to be a hard one to do. Uh, some fusion reactions involving hydrogen isotopes have been w made to work in Europe in the, uh, it's called the Joint European Taurus. Again, not in a controlled, sustainable manner. Um, there's a project that when I started wor working in the nuclear industry um, called ITER, the International Tokamak Research Project. Um, there was an international consortium that agreed to undertake it and it was going to produce up to 500 megawatts of fusion uh, sustained for over uh, uh, 400 seconds, right? So that was the goal, 400 seconds. It's going to happen in the southern, south of France. It's going to take a while. So for the moment, that's not going to happen. What I really want you to understand is you've smashed these two nuclei together. You have a higher binding energy per nucleon. That's why a fusion reaction is going to release energy. So from there, we can talk about the more interesting, the more, uh, you know, uh, current, I guess, version, which actually is being used in, uh, in the world, nuclear fission. Okay, so within the nucleus of an atom, nucleons are gonna experience both attractive forces and repulsive forces. You know this, right? The attractive force is called the strong force. It's like the glue that's holding the nucleons together. And the repulsive forces are the electric forces. So think of the Coulomb law, right? Between the positively charged protons. Gravitational forces do exist, but you know they're uh, negligible in comparison to the other forces. So stable nuclei are gonna have much larger attractive forces than repulsive forces. The stable nuclides generally have approximately the same number of neutrons and protons in the nucleus, right? So the ratio is close to one to one. In heavy nuclei like uranium or plutonium, there are far, far more protons than neutrons, giving the, uh, like, you know, for instance, uranium-235, let's say, right? Uranium-235 uh, has a neutron to proton ratio of 143 upon, uh, uh, upon uh, 92 protons, right? Uh, so that's uh, approximately equal to 1.55. That is what uh, leads to a lower binding energy per nucleon compared with iron, and such nuclides are less stable. Any further increase in the number of neutrons is going to make the nucleus under, undergo even uh, undergo nuclear fusion. So I hope you understand that. If I add one more proton here, this number is going to increase, right? The proton to neutron ratio is going to increase. What's going to happen to the number of nucleons in the nucleus? The nucleons have gone up. The binding energy as a result of that per nucleon will be lower. And as a result of that, the nucleides will be less stable. This allows us to define fission. You know, fission will be splitting the heavy nucleus into two 
nuclei of approximately, approximately the same mass. So an example of this would be, actually, let me go to the next slide and I'll show you the example. So now we here we have a uranium nucleus uh, and it's gonna get bombarded with uh, a neutron, right? So what do you think happens first? Well, first of all, it's gonna, the neutron is gonna get absorbed into, the, into this uh, uranium nucleus. So you're gonna have uranium-236 happening. Cool, this is no longer a stable situation to be in. This is an, you're inducing a nuclear fission because you know, you've, you've, you've made the uranium nucleus capture a neutron first. So what happens now? Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna produce barium that's one of the nuclides. The, the atom is going to split, in fact, right? The uranium atom is going to split. The nucleus, I should say, is going to split. And the barium atom is going to take away some of the protons and neutrons. And you're going to have krypton produced as well. And uh, with its own little uh, situation, you're going to have three excess neutrons produced. So you started off with one. You now have three excess neutrons. Uh, and some energy is going to get released. So can you see why this is called a chain reaction, right? Um, you've started off with one, it's ended up producing three neutrons, and these three neutrons are available to hit other uh, uranium-235 nuclei. So it can become runaway uh, reaction very, very fast. Um, this type of reaction is uncontrolled, and if that happens, a great deal of energy is released and a nuclear explosion is gonna occur, or in the case of a nuclear power plant, there's gonna be so much heat generated that it's gonna melt the nuclear core, so it's gonna be a meltdown happening. If the number of neutrons that take part in the reaction change chain is controlled, so that the number of fissions per unit time is constant rather than increasing, the rate of release of energy can be controlled, right? So if you found a way somehow, if instead of these three neutrons, you could absorb two neutrons and still have only one neutron generated, so it goes and hits the next uranium nucleus, right? So it's in some kind of a controlled uh, form. Um, in that case, you can control the reaction. So in nuclear reactors, we use something called control rods, um, which are actually just simply put neutron absorbers, right? Control rods are going to limit uh, the rate of, uh, of fission reactions. How? They're gonna do it by absorbing uh, neutrons. There are other things in nuclear reactors also so that you know you'll put uh, you, in some in some uh, designs of nuclear reactors you use heavy water. Um, so heavy water is uh, instead of H2O, it's D2O. It's made of deuterium and it acts as a moderator. So it will slow down the neutron. So it's gonna it may not absorb it, but it'll slow the neutron down. So it's gonna slow the uh, reaction um, reaction down. So essentially, you know, the 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 uh, control rods though are the are in in uh, pretty much every type of nuclear uh, configuration of nuclear reactors. Um, so control ro uh, rods will absorb the, uh, two of the three neutrons, uh, and the third neut neutron is still free. It can go on and hit U U two thirty five, the next uh, nucleus of U two thirty five, and that'll be the end of that. Uh, you know, I I beg your pardon. That will continue the reaction, uh, and so on and so on. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video, guys. Um, I'm gonna try and wrap up uh, chapter 26 in the next video, uh, and that is going to be on the topic of radioactive decay. So I will see you there. Thank you for watching.